Hello and welcome, my name is Nipolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are touching on an Avengers comic because the confusing start of Black Panther, A Nation Under Our Feet, inspired me to go back to the start. Apparently this means reading Avengers World with words by Jonathan Hickman, art by Jerome Opapana uh, for issues 1 through 3, and Adam Kubert issues 4 through 6, colors by... Dean White with Justin Posner, Maury Hollowell, colors by Dean White with Justin Posner, Maury Hollowell, Frank Martin, and Richard Isanoff, issues 1 through 3, Frank D'Armata, issue 4, and Frank Martin, issues 5 through 6, letters by VCs Corey Petit, Cover art by Dustin Weaver and Justin Bonsor. Editors Tom Brevoort with Lauren Senkovich and assistant editor Jake Thomas. I'll be reviewing the first trade, collecting issues 1 through 6, first published in 2003 and collected shortly thereafter, also in 2013. As with all these assembly line comics, I won't really be trying to profile every single one of the contributors at this time. My only thoughts are to note that I have somehow avoided reading any Jonathan Hickman work up to this point. So far, just by accident, I have no feelings, and 99% of this team appears to be male-identified, although from a couple different countries, so yay. Flipping to the back of the book, as I am one to do, the description for this T-plus rated volume is as follows. The Avengers go large, expanding their roster and sphere of influence to a global and even interplanetary level. When Captain America puts out his call, who will respond? The answers will surprise you. The Avengers' first mission takes them to Mars, but the secrets of the Garden lead right back to Earth's savage land. And when the Shi'ar Imperial Guard are broken on a dead moon, the Avengers travel across the galaxy to battle an invading force. It all leads up to the secret origins of the universe itself, as Captain Universe races to decipher the code hidden in the Avengers' recent adventure. Jonathan Hickman takes Earth's Mightiest Heroes to the next level with big threats, big ideas, and big idealism. These are the Avengers now. Bigger drama, more characters, all the complexity. Since I was brought to this book by my impression that Nation Under Our Feet was too complicated, I guess the first thing I wanted to note was what it was like coming to this as someone who hasn't really dived into Avenger comics before at the very least. I still read a lot more DC comics than Marvel overall. TLDR, I guess I should cut Coates a bit more slack because geez was this volume all about the quote unquote deepness. Unfortunately for Hickman, I have actually read the Bible a couple of times so the biblical imagery was less than impressive. I was a bit intrigued about the ways in which Hickman is using the Bible to seem really smart because other people haven't read the Bible, but it mostly struck me as being an unfortunate side effect of the Christian supremacy that dominates North America. Although I'm not sure I would want a white American man to be using any other ancient religious text, I feel as part of the quote-unquote dominant culture I should be aware of how pervasive my religion can be. I also wasn't terribly thrilled about the way that this introduction pointed to singular genius, as if anything is the product of one smart person and not a lot of different kinds of people. On the other hand, I did like how every chapter opened with a graphic passively letting you know what characters to expect. That was good. Flipping back through the volume, I would say the art style was more pleasing to the eye than I expected, if a bit overwrought. Although I guess that goes with some of the other issues I have with the comic. As far as the way that people with boobs are depicted visually, besides the fact that everyone is running around in spandex, the first half of the volume is pretty excellent, even in the second half where you definitely have the odd butt, sometimes even a guy's like ass boobs and a few cliche female poses, but the power dynamic where artists are basically drawing arrows from the cis man stick to the cis woman's vagina are avoided. I was a bit embarrassed by the fact that I was still a little bugged by these comic characters not looking like their movie counterparts. Obviously that would be pretty silly, but the human mind is inexplicable. As far as this book is concerned at least, the treatment of race seems halfway decent. It should be noted that the Avengers, as they are brought together for this particular issue, is the brainchild of a white man, putting him at the top, 
That does include a montage of some diversity, although people seem to mostly just be one kind of diverse at a time. From a Christian perspective, it was good to see Adam represented as brown. The only apparently intersectional diverse character that came to mind was Captain Universe, who is here taking up residence in a black woman. While well, I'm not the final word on this sort of thing, this representation as the personification of the universe as a black woman struck me as truth people speak in real life, rendered trite in a Marvel comic reality. There's also a scene at the end where the Asian character is trying to push Captain Universe out of caring about her previous physical experience and just go on being Captain Universe. Class remains unaddressed. Avengers will always have all the money that they need. But bye y'all. Keep reading and resist fascism. And as always, I would like to acknowledge that for the most part, all of my videos are filmed and produced on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation, land covered by the dish with one spoon, wampum belt covenant.